And once again, I want to say greetings to each and every one of you, Aquaba, and welcome. Welcome to another round of Culturally Conscious Communications here on the LIB Radio, LIB TV, and livinginblack.com networks. Kitty Owadu is my name, aka The Conscious Rasta. Weekday mornings, we're live from 9 a.m. on the West Coast. That's 12 noon for our East Coast listeners, 5 p.m. GMT, and 8 p.m. East African time. We get together and deal with a broad spectrum of activities related to human development and Pan-African sustainability. Today's date is Tuesday, the 22nd day of February, 2022 in the Western calendar. This corresponds to the year 6262. In the Kemetic calendar, too, which we reland our cultural clock, welcome to the seventh millennium. You have found your family in a peaceful place here on LIB Radio, LIB TV, livinginblack.com. And uh, welcome to the seventh millennium. You hear us talk a lot about pan-African sustainable development here on LIB Radio, and for good reason. The future belongs to those best prepared to create that future today. My guest today, you've heard him on LIB Radio numerous times over the decades, and for good reason, we keep bringing him back because he's doing the real thing. He's doing the right thing, especially for people of African heritage, to connect to our past, to our present, to our future. Without a long introduction, he is, of course, the founder, co-founder of Africa for the Africans, the fulfillment of the Garvey vision. Brother Bomani Tayemba is joining us from Osor, Osset City, a.k.a. Atlanta. Brother Bomani, I was a lion today. Okay, uh, make sure, is your microphone unmuted? Let me see. Uh, yes, family. Okay. I can hear you. you on right now. Uh, uh, Green's awesome. family. How is Brother Bomani Tayemba. doing today? How uh, is a lion doing family. today? Okay. Uh, I'm doing well, family. Can you hear me well? We can hear you good. There was a, may have been a little bit of a delay, but we got you up well and good right now. Africa for the Africans.org. Some of our listeners may be new to the show and unfamiliar with the purpose, the mission of Africa for the Africans. Can you give us some background of the organization and a, a little bit of the long, long history that you've accomplished over the past couple of decades? Uh, absolutely. I was trying to show my Tanzania uh, uh, a soccer jersey and everything. But uh, yes, All right. Well, you're looking good because I got my Uganda soccer jersey on. So we are the East African Federation today. <laughs> That's beautiful. All right. Excellent. Uh, Greens family. This is Bomani Tamba. Okay. And uh, the connection uh, with me is our business called Africa for the Africans Tours and Investments, uh, which we started in October of 2006 and did our first journey December of 2006. And the last journey we did was December of 2021. So we did 20 journeys to Ghana over the last 15 years. And uh, that journey and mission is to <coughs> reconnect us from the African diaspora for tours and also investment. So that's what we have built our Black Star repatriation and Pan-African community there in Jahadzi, which is about an hour and a half to two hours away from Accra. And that was the ultimate mission was to get good access to land that we can invest in so we can do community, industrial business, and any kind of economical development. Uh, so, you know, land is the base of independence. So we want to build things that we want to do group economics with. Uh, so that's what we built with the Black Star Pan-African community. So that 15-year mission was to work towards that end. So now we're in the another phase of what we're looking to do, uh, true you know, communalism. You know, you talk about it many times over and over, Kiti, about uh, the Kugit Shajirea village. Excuse my pronunciation. Uh, sometimes mm -hmm. there's an accent. Uh, well, we're, we're, we're working on our Swahili. I'm studying it again myself, Brother Bumani. <laughs> Yeah, true communities to where we can, you know, you know, put our money together and invest and live a better quality of life and get away from the individualism and things like that. And also, when you talk about repatriation, it's something that's very, it's not the simplest thing because there's no guidebooks, rule books. So you have different organizations trying to do their best across the different parts of the African continent. But what we have always been was the, the head of that operation as, as far as just 
coming up with unique ideas, just being very innovative people. Uh, me and my other business partners uh, that have uh, worked with me over the years. Uh, so coming up with these ideas, was you, what you do is you invest your business profits from your tourism into that business and acquire land, along with uh, reach out to investors. Uh, so people know how we pay for 15 acres of land. It's that simple. You build a group of people and you have all of the details laid out, all of the legal paperwork, which is the most important thing. I would tell anyone, if you're looking to acquire land from anyone, as I just explain this a little bit, as you and I are going to talk about business uh, in uh, Ghana and Tanzania, is to make sure that you have a nice, clean uh, sur a plan of survey. Uh, so if someone is selling you land, you want to see their name on these documents, you want to see their incorporation, You and then you can take those two things, the incorporation and the uh, survey to the Lands Commission or to your attorney mm -hmm. and, and or consultant and have them do the research on it. And then you can also do quick access to make sure that you go physically see the land, whether you see it on video or see it, have some level of uh, access to the land. Mm -hmm. if someone is not giving you access to the land, that's, a, that's an issue. So what we have set up is we have an office there. Just like I have an office here in Jonesboro, Georgia, there's an office there in Jahadzi, Ghana, uh, that represent um, all the business that we do, mainly uh, Black Star Pan-African community. So someone can go to the land, they can meet our first vice president, and he can show them the land, just like someone can come here and they can meet with me as the president of the organization and have the legal documents physically here, but also the legal documents It's on our website at africafortheafricans.org. We feel like it's very important for us to be transparent with people. So what you do is once you're on the website, you click on Black Star Pan-African Community. And then once you open up, uh, you'll see a list of documents uh, from introduction to the land survey, GPS location. So these are some of the things that we want people to understand. When you're dealing with people about land, get all of this information from them. And then once mm -hmm. you read and follow the rest of the documentation, we have full overview along with full general terms, including cancellation refund policies. Like all these policies have to be clear, but also we send out these documents via email and you have to sign off on it. Very important. Mm -hmm. It's a tricky situation, but what I've learned in the U.S. Navy is Pay attention to details and literally cover yourself because any little disagreement, people come after you. So you have to have these things organized. So that's one of the things I'm proud to say, Brother Kitty. You'll be proud of the level of organization that we have to mm -hmm. move into this new phase of business, which is investing in land and building industrial and manufacturing operation, you know, including import, export. Uh, we have access to beach land, uh, which we don't have right now, but we're working on that as another phase. So mm -hmm. you, you build a situation to build trust and build connections where you can have other access to land. You can bring in other investors who want to bring in resorts and other things. So you can make this really a beautiful black town where we as a people are from the diaspora and also the African continent have nice, full influence in something that's you know, strong and tangible. It's kind of like when you think about Jamaica, Negril, Ocheria, Samantico, but you think about that beautiful landscape and all of the rich other people invest in it so mm -hmm. I, I, I thought about that and we have access to doing that in ghana so those are some of the things i want to talk about i don't want to hold up too much of the time but it's one mm -hmm. people just to think about those things when they're thinking about acquiring land uh, a lot of people have gotten themselves in trouble so what we tell people mm -hmm. always always have serious attorney that's represented by a credible law firm that have a lot to lose and then make sure all of the documents that everyone get make sure they're signed and stamped by the people mm -hmm. in the lands commission and the courts and then these documents are all can all be verified. And if someone is given a fraudulent documents or something, it's easily verified based on basic research. So these are my things and my tips uh, uh, up front to let people know right away about these things and about how we have pulled it off by doing the right thing and getting the job done and want people to come along and let's keep on doing more business and get this thing going. We, we have seen and been reported, and I've been actually searching out and doing this research for an upcoming book that I'm writing. <clears throat> that it, uh, estimates of some 5,000 African people from the diaspora have in the last decade relocated, the greatest number relocating to the West African community nation of Ghana. But we can see our migrants moving all over the continent, Nigeria, Kenya, Uganda, Tanzania, and other destinations, including 
people moving into from the diaspora into the francophone or French speaking African nations. So this is a trend that is picking up. I've been to uh, Ghana, Togo and Benin with Africa for the Africans, a total of three trips to the motherland of which, you know, the trip to Togo and Benin was really quite special for me. And I just want people to know that Africa for the Africans is a good way, a great way for people who might be Africa curious, people who might be fed up with the machinations that we have to go just to be full citizens with all the rights accorded to us living in these diaspora countries, especially America, UK. And so therefore we have options. Talk to us about your recollection of the number of people who have made their first trips or initial trips to the continent with your group, Africa for the Africans, with our group, I consider myself to be an extension of this family. Absolutely. And to, uh, the people who have traveled there for first or initial trips and then relocated, repatriated. Uh, yes, uh, that number is a tricky number, but altogether we have had over 500 people travel with us over the 15 years of doing this business. Uh, so a small percentage of people have been interested, but we have built the interest over a period of time. Uh, so what we do have, we have a lot of uh, previous tour members that are part of the 50 plus members of Black Star Pan-African community. Mm -hmm. So we're looking at about, um, I have about anywhere from 10 to 20 people that live in the country. Um, it's hard to keep up, but if you, but more so closer to 50, because people have lived for one, two years and went back and forth. So if you just count that, you know, about 50 people. And then it's also outside that group, because I do help people uh, lay out a good game plan as far as making a move there and get settled. Mm -hmm. I know one of our dearest friends on the continent, Daudi Mahali, who is living yes. in the Bay Area. And I'm not going to put too much of his business out there, but had he stayed in the Bay Area, according to what oncologists were telling him, he was going to be dying soon. Well, he's been in Africa now, I think for what, over 10, 12 years or so. And from last time I checked, he is very far from being the dead man. So Africa can give us life. It can give us vitality, give us a reason for being vigorous and energetic and everything, as well as some people, Brother Bomani, are even marrying African citizens. Have you had any instances of people traveling with Africa for the Africans deciding that they wanted to go ahead and build that family bridge across the oceans? Uh, yes, that's one of the beautiful things about our journeys that we do. Uh, it's a whole lot of networking. So. Uh, throughout the different countries and the different uh, movements around, you know, people are going to meet and connect with people. So you have had um, you know, several people, and these numbers are very low because I don't really, you know, monitor these numbers. But you mm -hmm. have people connect, and you know, they build a world together. And you know, people have moved over here to the U.S. and people have also moved to Ghana, and they have this build their connection. So it opens up the world of black people connecting, and that's what I believe in, and that's what we do. You know, do a a global operation of business and just do a whole lot of networking, which is key as far as that business conference, going to the land, throwing certain social parties or social gatherings and, and things like that. So let's get the networking on and let's connect and meet each other's uh, people because you never know where your true love or your true connection may be. You just never know. Well, you know, love, <laughs> love is such a um, complex situation. Sometimes love emerges out of a vision of what we want our future to be. And sometimes love just, you know, drops on your head like a bird flying over you. <laughs> it hits you on the head and you just can't escape it. But I want people to know there are options. There are many options, economic options, social, psychological options, cultural options. And of course, the ability to invest our money, our preciously hard work money into living in a place where we are appreciated as human beings and where our hard work will pay off in a reasonable financial situation, wealth building for our families. That is an opportunity that's open if we would just include African nations as our future destiny. Would you agree or disagree with that statement? Absolutely, uh, brother. Um, the more the merrier. Uh, we're talking about a united front and we're talking about um, corporate economics and corporate connection. So we're going with strength with numbers. Mm -hmm. I am seeing many of my associates 
who are taking their retirement pensions, which might have them struggling to live in a city like New York, Baltimore, Washington, Los Angeles, Chicago, and other cities, Atlanta, struggling to live on $2,000 a month or so. But then they go to African nations where the purchasing power parity of the U.S. dollar might be anywhere from one to two to one to 3.37, which is what it was for Uganda last year. So therefore, if you're making, say, a $2,000 a month retirement pension and struggling over here, well, if you take that same retirement pension to a nation like Uganda, your $2,000 a month is going to purchase you the equivalent of over $6,800 worth of services, goods, and commodities every month. That makes you one of the wealthiest people in the nation. The wealthier people of the middle class, I should say. Yes, and um, and now uh, just give our people some ideas of what can be purchased in Ghana. Oh, you want me to give an idea? Well, yeah, uh, just the an idea of how far the U.S. dollar goes in a place like Uganda. Well, a quick example: um, for one hundred U.S. dollars, you're looking at six hundred CDs, so it's a six to one ratio. And some of the things we're looking at, honestly, is is land and beyond land, it's um, investing in just uh, the physical structures of our business, um, investing in the as aspect of import export. Uh, I talk about manufacturing, everything is just made el elsewhere. So you're looking at great opportunities to you know, set up manufacturing plants where you, where there's sewing machines or industrial machines and become a producer and also this build it to where you're, you're connected with other nations to where you're importing and exporting things that you both need and then cutting out in, in basically this important unnecessary things from other nations outside of Africa. So those are the, the, the things that's uh, literally just always an open investment. And and then naturally, you know, uh, farming. Um, some of the land that we have uh, in phase two, we have 60 acres. So we're looking at this cutting 10 acres of that alone and just doing straight farming, this organic mm -hmm. farming so we can just go back to knowing what you're actually eating. I mean, I know sometimes the fruit look nice and juicy and everything, but you just, you just don't even know the nature of where that even came from. I was been you know, groomed. So looking to go back to that, and that's always a great investment uh, in mm -hmm. tropical places. And I mentioned to you that uh, once we even get more access to uh, beach land, uh, you're talking about investing your money in, you know, your villas, your shops, your stores, um, you, you know, the, the craft and foundation of a beach town. So those mm -hmm. are some of the things that I see, um, you know, in, in a beach town, you want to have nice water sports and things like that. Like when you go to Ghana, it's not big on like water sports. Like if you go to Tanzania, uh, Zanzibar Island, that's big on water sports. So those are some of the things that, you know, you can open up things for. So it's good that we found a nice, beautiful uh, lo rural location, which is just, mm -hmm. it's literally, you know, we went to Winnable before, but it's just outside of Winnable. It's kind of like, you know, you know, Atlanta and then this, any suburban area outside of Atlanta. So mm -hmm. that is, it's not as populous, but also it's uh, still more in its natural state. So now mm -hmm. you can, when you get land, you can cultivate it and you can kind of design your own flow of sewage, your own flow of this infrastructure, and you can mm -hmm. do it in a more sustainable and natural way. So th these are the key things when I talk to people about investing, you know, land and then all the things you can do with land. Mm -hmm. And we can just go on and on about investment. And it's also based on where you want to be in Ghana because the further you go north, the more you have a chance to do bigger factories and things like that. And you know, you can get land for a better price further north. So That's people right. have to think about that, especially based on what they're looking to do. And they may want to invest in multiple real estate properties in different parts of the country for different reasons. Um, the inexpensive northern part of the country, as opposed to the potential for tourism investment to rise very dramatically. Once you get closer towards the Gulf of Guinea with the, with the waterfront, you mentioned Winneba. And one of my greatest memories of Winneba, of Ghana, is being in Winneba at the, I think it was a rock top beach hotel. Oh, that's correct. That's it. Yeah. And uh, from my understanding, they are no longer um, in business or are they still there? I don't remember if they're still there or not. Um, mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's one of those things where I haven't heard nothing from them and yeah well my online. my last trip to ghana was 
a vow, a promise that I will be coming back in three years. This was right as the recession was getting its grip on all of our economies. But I wanted to get a piece of property there right next to the Rock Top Beach Hotel in Winneba. I remember it overlooking the Gulf of Guinea. The ocean was right there, but this beautiful river meandered out of Ghana and merged into the ocean right there. Just before this river hit the ocean front, on one hand was this big wide open era, area with tropical fruit trees and you see people coming down, stop their boat, go out into that little wooded area, forest area and come out with big baskets of fruit to take to the market. Looking down, looking east along the coastline for as far as the eye could see was almost nothing but palm trees with maybe one little building or something about a quarter of a mile away from each other. And then right down in front is that little river. Just before it hit the ocean, it took a 90 degree turn going to the right, which would be west, and then went about another 100 yards and then went into the ocean. So you had your fresh water. You had your wild forest with tropical fruits. You had your long beach line with nothing but coconut trees. And just on the other side of this little spit where the river took the right hand turn, maybe about 30 yards on the other side was the ocean. You had your fresh water. You saw Brother Bomani. And then I found out that the cost of the land over there, which had gone up, was still only about $1,500 an acre or so. Am I describing something that's real? Uh, yeah, that is absolutely real. And the price is real. You mentioned 1500 an acre. So I... Uh, more or less, that's what you're going to get uh, land for. You just got to be ready to develop it. That's right. That's right. That is awesome. We got our listening audience joining us in. You can give us a call. I have one telephone I ain't open right now. I'm going to open a second line in just a few minutes. Call us, 323-328-1863. You'll be speaking with my guest today, Brother Bomani Tayemba, Africa for the Africans. Org. We have our first comment, first question. Is from Alpha Grio, Brother Lim, always great having you in the house. And greetings to everyone checking in. We see the Drew family saying greetings. King Pianchi, Ma'at Hotep, Alpha Grio, greetings. He says, when or will Brother Bomani be going to Tanzania again? Do you have any trips coming up to Kenya? All right, uh, no trips to Kenya, but we're going to Tanzania November 17th to the 28th of this year. Mm -hmm. And uh, we are, and all the information is live and running up on our website. And also we have um, full highlights of the previous two tours, which was That's November right. 2020 and November 2021. Uh, all of the highlight videos on uh, YouTube where you can just click and watch and see what we do. Yeah. Where in Tanzania do you visit on the trips? Uh, yes. Uh, Arusha, Zanzibar Island and Dar es Salaam. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Arusha as being proposed as perhaps the capital of the upcoming impending East African Federation, which this decade, six African nations are planning and they're working to plan already to merge their self into a federation, which would become the sixth largest nation in the world population wise, with three other countries, the Democratic Republic of the Congo, Ethiopia and Somalia expected to join the East African Federation, which would make it the fourth largest nation in the world to be joining with Tanzania, which itself is a federation of Tanganyika and Zanzibar, Kenya, Uganda, Rwanda, Burundi, and South Sudan. Brother, that stuff is so exciting. Uh, I think you know by now, I'm planning in on being there on inauguration day and staying at least half of the year in the East African community, setting up multiple businesses. Well, that's a powerful connection right there. Uh, based it on is. my um, uh, uh, tours to uh, Tanzania, I've been to also Kenya, and also I've been to uh, Ethiopia with you. <laughs> and yeah, uh, with you together. Know, oh, what a trip! We'll have to talk about that. Continue. Yeah, it's um, it's you know, it's it's it's, it's a vibrant energy. I mean, might as well you know put the economies together and make some things happen, and you know. Yeah get more of us from the diaspora open it to interest to be um invested in there so uh that's why i got to you know that journey to tanzania just to kind of get more of us open and connected to east africa because before we didn't really have much going there and it was just trying to find the right country uh just like you know you got uganda and uh kenya uh which are two great countries to go to 
and looking to also just see, see what we can put together. But, you know, you're mm -hmm. kind of limited on what you can put together on a schedule. But uh, Tanzania represents us a nice energy of where mm -hmm. people can just open their minds. And now that federation would just you know, include them. So now they can just be a part of, you know, a nice energy to business, do business and invest. Because mm -hmm. what we do is mainly roots and culture tours, but we're also always open to connecting people in the right era. They just have to be open and ready to kind of you know, process and look over everything and be ready to invest. So look to hear more about that. That's a good connection. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you say you will be two times in Tanzania this year. Am I correct? Is that what you said? No, I've been there twice in the past, uh, okay. November 2020 and November 2021. And we'll be well, going for the third time, November 2022. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm going to do the best I can to be there with you this November. Um, I actually have um, been developing more and more connections in not only Kampala and Uganda, where our group has leased 135 acres of land, but also to be able to travel from Nairobi, which is not too far from Dar es Salaam that I'll be able to travel. So hopefully, I don't know if I'll be able to do the whole tour with you because, you know, the business schedule has to be a little bit tight. But at the same time, getting away for two, three, four days to come to visit Tanzania for my first trip. I'm looking forward to that. I have the greatest fondness for the country, as well as I developed a great fondness for its former leader, now an ancestor, um, his honor, the Honorable John Pemba Magufuli. Uh, yes, uh, it was a it was a great energy in the country. Uh, the whole time we were there, uh, and even in death, um, you know, his energy is still there. Mm -hmm. uh, so the people love him and everything. So it's one of those um, uh, things uh, where you know, you know, where you know, they just keep. It's a country with great leadership, and you know, they mm -hmm. they, they they do things their, their own way to where you know it, it works for them. And I'm just still just trying to learn the country, but all I can say is, you know. The, Two times we've been there before at a great time, and uh, Zanzibar Island was just you know always all of you know, all of it is great, but Zanzibar Island was just nice to just be out there in the tropical atmosphere out there by beautiful beaches mm -hmm. and be able to just really just enjoy paradise. Um, and so we just look to keep on doing that and look to open our minds up to you know you never know yeah. start getting into investments. That is absolutely awesome. Tyrell in the house sends his greetings. Brother Robert G in the greetings sends greetings. Alpha Grio wants to know this. And of those, this is very important in many people's minds. During this time of the pandemic, what are the requirements, the demands for people insofar as um, injections, testing, whatever? I know, I know firsthand it makes travel anywhere in the world, but especially to our African continent, makes it much more problematic. But it's not impossible, though. It's a, a day of inconvenience, and you're in. All right, gotcha. Um, the main thing I'll say um, is to make sure everyone, when you're traveling, just make sure you read all of the travel advisory for that country. So, mm -hmm. in general, the requirements are a COVID-19 test uh, within 72 hours, and that's for all of the countries that we are we have listed, uh, whether mm -hmm. it's uh, Ghana, Tanzania, Senegal, or the Gam or Gambia. Uh, so. That's one thing. And then uh, some uh, countries like Tanzania require for you to take a PCR test. Uh, a, excuse me. The test that we're talking about is a PCR test, a COVID-19 mm -hmm. PCR test. Let's be specific. And then when you get to the country in Tanzania, you have to take a rapid, assay. rapid test. Mm -hmm. And that's for $10. Mm -hmm. uh, in Ghana, it's $150. And those have to be paid before you travel. Uh, mm -hmm. So that's the next set of our requirements. Uh, health decoration or health forms have to be filled out. So those are some of the things that, um, those are the main things I should say that you see on the travel uh, advisory for you to mm -hmm. get prepared for or at the airport's uh, website for that country. Uh, so, and whoever you're traveling with, uh, if you're traveling with us, I have conference calls, we have group uh, chat, we just go through all of those details, mm -hmm. especially go through it you know, three months or three to two months before we leave. Uh, just go more into details, but Again, all those things is just literally just on our website. Uh, that way anyone can just process it because that's very important that people are clear on information because what people are doing is a lot of like hearing bad information. And that's things right. that I'm, so I'm telling people it's important to read it from the source. If I'm going to Ghana 
I'm looking at Ghana travel advisory and I'm looking at Ghana requirements from the airport. Because Ghana airport represents All right. Um, the phone dropped for just a second. I don't know whether it's on your end right. or my end. Okay. And I'm just plugging in the second telephone line. You can give us a call. Two lines open. Now we have 646-716-9835. That's our blog talk queue. Press the one button when you get in. That'll let me know you want to speak with my guest today, Brother Bomani, Africa for the Africans.org. Make sure you bookmark that website. Go back. Look at those beautiful pictures of the past tours, a couple of which you'll see my smiling, happy, I'm liberated from America face in them as well. Are you still doing the naming ceremonies there on the beach at uh, One Africa? Uh, yes, we're still doing the naming ceremony, but it's not at the beach. It's something more interactive, but it's, uh, it's still um, something that we have that we do. Mm -hmm. That's really awesome. That was beautiful. I was given my born on saturday named kwame kwame, kwame Kitty. Yeah. um you know when i went to i don't know whether you ever heard this story when we went to ethiopia in may 2017 i don't think you were there because it was real early at 4 30 in the morning they had the oh, parade no, the solemn there. parade of the um the church of saint mary and rather um Yao Davis, who organized the trip, praise be his beautiful name. He's still with us. He's no, not an answer, but I just got to big him up every time I think about Brother Yao because he's really a champion on so many fronts. But he told he woke us up, and I would think it was only me and him, and then a couple of other people joined us. Now they were we were all in the little taka taka or whatever they call the little little get about small vehicle, yeah. And the, we gathered at the town square in Oxum. At 4.30 in the morning, they gave everybody big beeswax candles, and we marched in the solemn parade. They went in to the monastery, and every monastery in Ethiopia has a copy of the Ark of the Covenant, which is stored, I believe it's stored in Oxum. Am I correct? I can't confirm that. Um, I do yeah. remember, we I did do remember go the there. church that we were told that it's supposed to be there, but <laughs> that's, that's what we were told during the lecture. That's right. And then we went to that location and only one person on the planet gets to occupy the space with the Ark of the Covenant. That's his job for life. He's not even allowed to have a girlfriend. Oh, good God almighty. He loves that Ark. <laughs> but each of the monasteries has a copy. So they brought the copy of the Ark of the Covenant out. They did some solemn ceremonies and then marched around the whole town. Brother, that was one of the most magical days of my entire life. But at one point during that, um, two, everyone's dressed in white and two of the elders of the community, you know, we, we had the cameras, I was shooting photographs and we were videotaping and two of the elders confronted me and I'm wondering, oh, maybe they're a little disturbed because I'm photographing and they said, and they said, spoke to me in Amharic and the brother who was with me was operating the video camera. He said, the elders just looked at you and they said, you are Habesha. You are one of us. And I carried that forward and I've taken the name Johannes, which is a great hero in Ethiopian culture. People, these are the experiences you will have when you go home to your mother continent. They do not hate us. They love us. Am I telling the truth? Do Africans in Africa love or hate their diaspora cousins? Yes, our people in Africa love the diaspora cousins, especially if you come with a positive, energetic attitude. That's so, right. You know, because, you know, it's a reflection. It is a reflection. We have seen some people go over there with a not so positive an attitude. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Isn't that true? Yes, it's unfortunate. Um, and um, we're trying to <laughs> help people to understand that, you know, that's not going to get you anywhere. Uh, so this. Be cool, relax, and just um, you know, go with the flow of your host, you know, because mm -hmm. you know, for the most part, if you show up, you know, you have to have some kind of host and follow your host directions That's and right. guidelines, and just uh, you know, have a positive attitude and just enjoy paradise. And I mean, uh, you know, you know, you have you're in, you're in tropical Africa, you know, there's, there's so much to enjoy. So I wouldn't focus on anything negative. Um, you know, like we do those journeys, we, we're rolling for ten days. I'm trying to enjoy every minute because, you know, after 10 days, you got to go back, you know, or That's right. whatever time you set to go back. So 
the best thing I would tell people is, is, is focus on this enjoying paradise and a positive energy. That's right. And and just chill, just relax. If little tensions come up, because traveling with a group for 10 days, 15 days, at a certain mm -hmm. point, members of the group get tired of each other and we'll start, you know, kind of sniping at each other. Don't worry about it. It, it, if it does happen, it's not going to persist because there's just so much beautiful input coming in from the environment over there. You should forget that, you know, you got beef with African-Americans. <laughs> so just go forward, people, and enjoy yourself. And another memory that, that I recall is like we eat really well on the trips with Africa for the Africans. People who are vegans are accommodated. People who are not vegans, they're accommodated real well while they're eating healthier than they would eat if they're on this side. But I remember after about seven, eight days or so, 10 days, we rolled back into Accra and drove by a KFC and there was almost a riot on the bus. <laughs> I don't remember that moment, but that's funny though. <laughs> People said, stop the bus. They had to get that KFC. <laughs> And it was funny. And we didn't berate them. We just had a good little chuckle. And, you know, it's, that's that. That's it. That's us. We coming from a strange place where we got reprogrammed <laughs> to like strange things like KFC. You know, I guess people, well, this is before. Oh, and we were in Africa. I remember the morning Barack Obama was elected. We were at One Africa. Do you recall that morning? Uh, yes, I do recall. Yeah, because I, I remember uh, I was kind of ambiguous. People were mad at me because I was ambiguous. I wasn't a big fan of Barack Obama. And then the election comes and woke up early in the morning and all I could hear was sisters screaming. And we knew yeah. it was the election. <laughs> yeah, that was November uh, 2008. That's right. That's right. Yeah. And, and they were very proud. And, and it was good to see the sisters smiling and happy and everything. So... I just chilled on, I didn't say anything negative about him being elected, but later, Bomani, I went back and I looked at the photographs from that day and I know I didn't do it intentionally, but I looked at the photographs from that day and I was wearing a t-shirt with Khalid Abdul Muhammad's picture on it and the captain said, a real black man. <laughs> I, do I do remember that, honestly. <laughs> it was a long time ago. But I didn't do that on purpose. It just Khalid yeah, just jumped that, on my chest um, that day. It was said, not hey, organized. That's right. Talk to our <laughs> people about what they can be expected. And again, I'm looking to see if anyone's giving us a call. Call us at 646-716-9835. Talk to Brother Bomani. Africa for the Africans. I betcha, betcha, betcha. A bunch of our listening audience are curious about what would be your experiences traveling to the African mother continent. And I'm going to put up the link here in the chat so everyone can have access to it. So they can come by bookmark Africa for the Africans.org. If not this year, maybe next year. If not next year, then maybe two times the following year. Brother Boani, what kind of experiences can they expect? Do you go on safari in Tanzania? Uh, we go on a Arusha National Park. Um, base the national park of uh, not safari safari we're there for about three hours uh, driving around and was you know you see lots of animals and you have a nice presentation on the bus and it's a you know it's a very special and i also have lots of video highlights on our you know, on our youtube link for tanzania uh for both tours uh so it's an introduction but if someone wants a full safari or what they'll do just let us know and we can get it organized for them ahead of the tour or at the end of the tour. Uh, so that's what we have people doing and things like that because the group that we work with, uh, that's what they specialize in. They specialize in safaris. But you know, what I like to do is routine and culture tours. And the, and the routine and culture tours, you know, museums, historical places and things like that. Um, so we added the national park uh, since we didn't want to take up too much of our tour days doing safari, which could take you know, four to five days or you know, I think, mm -hmm. I think that's like the medium and things like that. So that's what I've organized so far in Tanzania. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was able to go on my first safari 
in Uganda. I had visited the Nairobi National Park outside of Nairobi in 2014, but safari was wholly, completely different. Having days there with the animals. And in Uganda, they got a lot of elephants. We had not seen but maybe one elephant in the distance. A lot of lions there in, in Uganda. It, going on safari in East Africa, it's just got to be the greatest joy. I mean, we've seen wild animals in Western Africa, but East Africa is completely different, isn't it? Yes, it is. Yeah, and the, it's considered that the Serengeti is the greatest wildlife collection, I should say, or territory on the planet. The Serengeti, which is largely Tanzania, is a nation that has the, the, the largest part of the Serengeti in it. And this big, huge grassland, it's so vast and so large. The first time I ever saw an elephant, it just blew my mind. And then by the time we left Uganda, we had seen hundreds of elephants, sometimes as many as eight of them at a time together. They're just awesome, absolutely awesome. And giraffes, I think the giraffe is the greeter. I think every time I've been um, in a place to see African animals in the wild, the giraffe is always the one, the first one to come and greet you. So that's what we do. Um, talk to the people. I don't want to be just taking all the conversation. Get them excited, Brother Bumani. This is a new reality for many people of African descent. How many of our parents, how many of our grandparents ever had a chance to go and see the mother continent? Yes, absolutely. Uh, so what we have set up is a literally a good introduction. So Ghana is in you know West Africa and Tanzania and East Africa. So and those are journeys that are you know you have itineraries flexible around the time. So Tanzania, the time frame after that is um, like November 17 to the 28th. So that's around uh, certain holidays uh, that people can plan around and things like that. Mm -hmm. uh, so that may work for some people. And then you know, we have Ghana in May and December. But also, you know, we have another journey, Senegal and the Gambia, uh, ready for March 31st to April 10th next year. And that journey mm -hmm. is two countries. So you're able to just connect the two wonderful countries and enjoy a nice roots and culture tour with uh, great dining, um, great social uh, connecting and things like that. So it's uh it's just something that people have to be open for. You know, we try to get people excited as very, as much as possible and things like that, but it deals with a level of you know reading some of the information and this processing that you know we're taking them to Africa and you know we're gonna get them through this COVID era and then go through all the requirements and all they have to do is just follow the flow of everything. And then once you get there, does the fun and excitement start where you can just kind of relax and just enjoy it? But it is worth going through the information and it's worth literally just going through all of the, the requirements and preparation you have to do to get there because it's going to take a little bit, uh, you know, to make it happen. Uh, you know, it's a long preparation. You, you know, you're going away for a country for anywhere from uh, 10 to 12 days. Uh, so, and want everyone to know that all the itineraries that I have on our website is itineraries that give you a full package of experience and mm -hmm. things like that. And there's not much I can think of that's not included in and then, but they're all special itineraries on their own. Uh, mm -hmm. things like that. So want more people to just reach out um, after you check things out, ask questions, uh, my contact details on the website where you can connect with me on WhatsApp or just email or anything like that. And you can ask questions and we can just go through it. Uh, I have uh, no problem going through the vast amount of things that we have online, you know, to show the photo highlights, the video highlights, and also the... Um, the details which are the website and that's one of the main things i would say to everyone uh that's talking to me uh specialize in having things organized because i believe that people should have access to all of the information 100 percent displayed available for them before you make any kind of commitment to anything and i i feel like whoever that's doing that business that's their responsibility to just be upfront with people and be respectful to our people so I, all those things are shared along with also the previous documentation of people who even, we have people living on the land that we have and people building on the land that we have, and we have people that's working on the land. So that's one form of documentation. And then the, the same thing uh, too, we have this video highlights of just all parts of the tours that we have done. And you have, people have never seen so much videos and documentation ever. 
So just trying to get people energetic into this, looking at those things, checking it out and comparing it to what's out there in the market. And then just literally just connecting with us um, and let us take you there. I specialize in doing this journey from 2006 to now. And all we have done is getting better and better and added more countries and added more operations and more things. So we have shown our growth and stability and consistency and also letting people know that we've all, you also show us having a whole lot of fun and excitement and also educational stuff. So <laughs> it's kind of like a mixed energy to give you a balance, a feel of Africa to this enjoy paradise. And then I'm here at my business office to accept phone calls and work on projects and get things working for people and just have everything that's centralized, ready to go. So I'm letting people know that we're ready to go. Uh, for those who are looking to connect with us on any of the journeys from 2022 to 2023, that's right. That's right. And one of the highlights of the trip, from my perspective, have always been our visits to schools and the orphanages and other places where we share, we bring things and we share them with the community. Are you still doing that? Can you describe what happens on these days? Uh, yes. Yeah, so part of our program for every country that we go to, we have a, a program to where we collect uh, school supplies, especially like black dolls and any kind of uh, things that's related to black people. Uh, that way, when we are bringing it to the different countries that we're going to, we're just bringing something that reflects us. So if there's dolls or anything that look like a person, it look like us and things like that. Uh, so that's one aspect of things. And then the school supplies and just uh, clothing and things like that. So we do that a few times in Ghana. And we also do that in Tanzania uh, at uh, Poli uh, Elementary School uh, outside of Arusha. Uh, we also do that in Senegal and the Gambia. Uh, so those are things that we have done continuously as part of our program uh, to, to, to link in the, um, I would say, the social aspect of things. Uh, so we try to show people all forms of when we're going, we're not going empty handed. And also when we're going, we're creating opportunities, like you talked about in the past, uh, skills transfer and also connection to where you're meeting people to where you are doing things together now to where from here is our U.S. base, and then there is a base in the other country, which is a representation of people there that can get things done. So that's the unique things about um, that I'm telling people that we have uh, organized and well-connected, but it takes time and takes work to get this thing done. You cannot pull off what we have done overnight. You have to just keep on working at it and then get better, especially the management of business and keeping up with people and keeping up with things that's going on. So uh, definitely, I always want to talk about how excited our journey is, but also want to always talk about that these things are because our business is being handled and how organized things are. So I'm always explaining, family, just reach out if you need clarity of everything, because you're talking about going to Africa, doing business and things like that. That's a lot to process and a lot to be clear on. And only thing you can really be clear on is this if you have access to everything that you need and also access to the person that can explain and assist you. So I'm that person and it's not a situation where people call and we charge a consultation. You know, you call and talk to us and then I, I just need to know what you're looking to do, whether you're looking to do a tour investment or you're looking to just make your way to the country on your own. But whatever it is, there's no upfront cost of anything. And I mentioned to people that information for me is information that's free because we are representing a business that we want people to be clear on what the services and things that are being offered, you know, because that's what we offer. We offer professional tourism and investment services based on the operation organizations that we have in place and the experience. Uh, so the only way that could be clear is if we're communicating so I can hear and understand where you're coming from. But please, family, make sure you don't just out there listening to this whatever is out there on YouTube. YouTube, it could be a beautiful thing, but it can also be a dangerous thing because it is so much bad information about, example, Ghana, like so much misinformation because people want to make YouTube clicks and YouTube mm -hmm. views and subscribers uh, and things like that. So, And that's why I mentioned land because you see a lot of crazy videos about land in Ghana and things like that. Mm -hmm. but, well, and you have your, your due trolls. diligence. Yeah, you have your trolls, you have your parasites, and you have <laughs> your enemies, and then you have those who are undercover who see the work that you and I do 
It's dangerous to the long-term self-interest of their passion, which is make America first, no matter how many lies America tells. And yes, I have been attacked as well. You have been attacked. But we realize, let the track record show for itself. One of the beautiful things <clears throat> that when I'm attacked, I just say to the person attacking me, for instance, I do a little bit of, who is this? What kind of profile? What work are they doing? But with nowadays, a search engine, you can just type in their name and type in the name of the person who they've attacked, and you're going to see their track record. It makes it pretty easy for those of us who have public operations and businesses that are, have to be transparent. Otherwise, we lose the confidence of the people we're attempting to serve. Is that true? Perfect, Kidia. That's beautiful to, to explain. And because because definitely um, Ghana is a wonderful country, family. And mm -hmm. I, you know, like I do hear misinformation about mandates and things like that. And that's what I mentioned to people also to go to source of reading it and things like that. Because I've had people say, oh, I'm not going to go to this country. I don't want to do anything in this country because they're doing this in this country. And what you see sometimes is uh, clips of videos that people put up of Ghana making it seem like there's crazy things going on. So that's the, so these are the things that we definitely mentioned to the individual that talk to a credible source in that country and find out what's going on. That's why I tell people, if you travel with me, I'm your person or connection. That's like if you're getting real estate from someone, you deal with your agent or mm -hmm. your attorney and things like that. So I'm trying to get people to open up. Well, we always talk about Kitty, the most important thing, critical thinking. When you're making right. decisions, you got to kick in a critical thinking mindset or else you'll make a lot of bad decisions. So I try my right. best to help our people focus and understand, make these decisions. Like so A lot of times I get calls about which African country should I move to and things like that. And I do my best to just explain as best as I can as a person. But at the end of the day, the individual got to organize that as a research and compare that to something else and make their decision. And that's, that's right. just where I look at it. I mean, we can point out the advantages of being in a nation like Senegal, which if you have a background French speaking language, that could be very helpful being in any of the Francophone nations. If you have a, a, a if you're interested in foreign direct investment and you are of the investor class, then the ROI, the return on investments is distinctly different and different types of investments around the continent. If it's security and safety you want, we can point out a nation like Rwanda and its capital Kigali considered to be the safest location on the African continent and very progressive leadership. So Africa has 55 countries, distinctly different regions with all their own distinctly different characters, even within a nation like Ghana, you're gonna have over a dozen different tribal groups, each with their distinct characteristics. Kumasi, beautiful city, is really quite distinct from the Cape Coast region or from Accra or a Kosambo. So there's uh, yes, a lot and, there. Yeah, absolutely. And as you go around Ghana, it's an incredible landscape. And even that alone, people have to kind of see where they want to be at. Uh, so it also takes a more <laughs> mental process. Uh, and that's the importance of traveling and visiting the country and mm -hmm. things like that. So, uh, these are just things that you just, you know, you just want people to open their minds up because traveling, living, and doing business in Africa is becoming a lot more popular. Mm -hmm. uh, so, a person like myself feel like I'm an expert in this since I've been doing it so long. I've been actually traveling to Africa since uh, 2004 when I went to Senegal in March of 2004 and then Egypt of uh, April 2004. And that was a historical journey with Dr. Renoko Rashidi. And I made that uh, documentary. I even just uploaded it uh, last month on my YouTube page. Uh, I even have a playlist for it. And it'll show that uh, six hour recording that I've done. It was a nice long documentary, very in detail uh, and, and well edited, uh, you know, as one of my first foundation documentation in Africa. And that was literally 18 years ago. So I uh, continue to do, do these uh, documentations showing us what's going on in Africa and what we're working on. And I just mm -hmm. really feel that's the most important thing. So as houses go up on our land, I'm showing people these. This is real. I know sometimes people are looking like, "Is this real?" I was like, "Yes, it's a real." This is someone who just came to Africa with us on a tour in December 2019, and now they live here, December 2021. That's why I was explaining to my group members on the last Ghana tour, and they were like, "I was like, yes, they've been building this house earlier last year, and they finished a few months ago, and now they're living in it." 
So they're like, how did they move around and get to Africa? I was like, they came to Africa with us and they just followed our program. And then we helped them get residency and all the legal paperwork for their land to where they can get um, everything that they need built and set up. And, and, and it's, it's amazing, but literally tell people that we should be definitely excited because I was like, we've been working towards this for a long time. Since me and you connected, we've been always trying to find the best group to work and do land with. And every time we connect with a group to do land business with, there's always some kind of foolishness going on. You know, things that just, just make you just, just as sad. So after a while of trying to find people and we couldn't find people, we just literally put our money together and invest in land and literally went out there and got a corporate attorney, got our good brother, Kwabina Baka. Now, mm -hmm. Kwabina Baka is somebody I've known since 2007. So that was the, one of the main person that I was like, I looked at as a consultant, somebody I can trust. Mm -hmm connect with the chief, connect with the attorney, and make sure all the legwork and everything is done. So this was an it was an intricate process, but we pulled it off, uh, KD. It was like literally an organized process, but I'm telling the people out there, if you're trying to do these things in Africa, you can get it done, but let's follow some level of protocols. Don't let's go there and give your money to this. Anybody who say that they're chief or anybody mm -hmm. that say my uncle owns the land. Because when I have members calling me, telling me that, I was like, you know that, you know, we have people in place in the country. If you need something done, you can just reach out to us. But mm -hmm. it's like they reach out to you towards the end when you know the damage is done already. And then now you gotta mm -hmm. play you know, damage control, which no one likes to play damage control. You want to be able to know things up front, especially if you're trying to represent people for real estate, land, and development. So that's why I'm always offering what we do at Black Star Pan African Community for any of those out there that's looking to do certain things. You know, we have, you know, we have attorneys and people like that in place that can help you. It's best to pay the money and invest in an attorney than to just make bad decisions uh, because the attorneys are going to do the legwork for you. The attorneys can easily call the lands commission and say, is this, is this real or not? So that's one of the things that, you know, I want people to understand why we're literally talking about this, because if we have people having issues with land, then they're going to have issues with building. And we want to see what more people build more people come to Africa, more people put their money together, more people work together so we can build a bridge for the diaspora. So our children on the continent and in the diaspora can have wonderful international opportunities. I mean, you and me and you always talk about that great network and all of the technology that you and I have, and we want to do skills transfer to the highest level. So us mm -hmm. having an operation here on the land where you and I could come train, teach our, our, our people in general. And when I mean our people, I'm talking about our folks on the diaspora and also the continent. I'm not making it seem like we're coming there to teach anybody and, and, you know, because I don't want people to think that we, we, we just know it all and we're just going to teach the Africans mm -hmm. and the content. Yeah. No, it's, well, it's there, a, there, we there are processes. educate each from each other. But, excuse yeah. me? There are processes called technology transfer and skills transfer. These are processes that empower whole nations, whole regions of the planet. I mean, look at the development of China in the last 60 years. Well, it begins with a number of Chinese people who see themselves as essentially Chinese first. And though, so therefore they had been educated for decades in America, but they started taking technology to their continent and skills sets to their continent. It's not a matter of arrogance. It's a matter of understanding what Malcolm X says, the future belongs to those best prepared to create that future. Paraphrasing Malcolm X, and I think I may have used my own quote mixed in there. The future belongs to those of us who plan for the future. Absolutely, Kitty, and, and as you and I have been talking over the years, uh, building this Operation Africa for Africans was that plan, this planning for the future and working towards it. And you know, the most important thing, you know, just being consistent, it's like people see in Africa every year, it's like, what are they doing? They're just always hanging out in Africa. No, it's more than that. It's, it's, a, it's a mission. It's roots, it's culture, it's business. And also the financial resources that part of the mission of what we have as Africa for Africans has always been that you invest in Black-owned business. So you know, like a, a company like the Micklin Hotel, you're going there twice a year. And also you have friends and other people that are going there when you're not there. And you begin to build that relationship. Uh, you invest in... And, you know, and together we can rise together. Uh, so mm -hmm. that's one of the main things that um, we're building energy of. Because a lot of times you can go to a country like Ghana, easy, you can stay at the Marriott and all of the restaurants you eat could be Indian, Chinese, and also other nations. Mm -hmm. Awesome, awesome, awesome. The time right now, 10 o'clock here on the West Coast. That makes it 1 p.m. for our East Coast listeners, 6 p.m. 
GMT. If you want to give us a call, we have one line open at this particular point. You can call us at 323-328-1863. Talking with Brother Bomani, Africa for the Africans, the O-R-G. Um, and um, again, give us the dates of the upcoming trips so people, if they're going to tune in, they're going to know uh, they need to tune into these trips as far in advance as they possibly can. Oh, um, yes, uh, always. Uh, I mean, we have to plan these things out ahead of time. But the next journey that we have is to Ghana, uh, Ghana, May 24th to June 5th. Then we mm -hmm. have Tanzania, November 17th to the 28th. And then um, end off with uh, Ghana, December 24th to January 5th. And then we're going to start the year fresh 2023 in Senegal and the Gambia. That's March 31st to April 10th. And that's the details you're going to see when you go to our website, Africa for the Africans.org. And once you click on those links, you're going to see the full itinerary. And um, it's going to give you a nice day to day itinerary of the full program that we're doing. Also, a nice overview. And definitely want everybody to read the general terms. And it covers all of the basis of the uh, tour terms and things like that. And that's also, we have a preparation information. Uh, that's a 30 point and give you all the details of what to pack, what to bring, what to look out for, where to meet, and things like that. So those are what I mean, like upfront details that are clear that anyone can click on process and then call me and we talk, uh, confirm everything and then move forward. And that's yeah. how all of the 500 plus people that have traveled with us the last 16 years have gotten these journeys and enjoy the journey of a lifetime. And that's why you have so many exciting folks out there that's always talk about uh, what we built the journey of a lifetime. And also that's why you see so much other people out there now that's doing some of the similar things, doing Africa tours and investment, because it's a brand of just a beautiful connection and it's a needed brand also. So I commend those that are also join this energy and also provide those connections using their network and resources, because together, the more energy that we are building in the country, Ghana, it's the more energy that uh, the African continent see us being serious. And, mm -hmm. and, and, you know, and that's the more energy of who we can connect with other serious business people in the different countries. That way we can work together and do organized business together. Just like all the wonderful business partners that I've met there in Ghana, uh, that we have done wonderful business with, whether it's our tour guide, Kwabna Baka at SAS Consultants, whether it's the chief that we acquired the land from Nana Haiti, whether it's the attorney, um, Charles Richard Barrister, and uh, uh, Richard um, Lapo, and just all other people that uh, work with us in business. Uh, mm -hmm. These are the energies of uh, Ghanaians that we're working with that we've been able to get business done because there's only so much I can get done in this office. I depend on the business people that we have there, especially our attorneys, to get things done, especially if you show up in Ghana and you need to get your residency done, then we have to connect you with you know our people there on the ground. So those are the things I'm proud to say that we 100% have organized and ready to go. We can literally get you a shipping container uh, packed and send, put on the land, get you a, a short-term six-month to one-year lease, and then you can mm -hmm. build your house while you know while you're living in a short-term house. I'm not speaking real quick, but I mean literally from A to Z. And you know, and you've seen me in this movement. I've worked hard to get there, and I'm proud to say, as of this year, 2022, we're able to do all of those things, like simple and easy, like like snapping your finger because everything is in place. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, we have across the street from our community, we have another community, and they're renting houses and uh, apartments and things like that. Mm -hmm. So literally individuals can just walk across from there and walk on the land and build their house every day. That's mm -hmm. how organized we have it. And the shipping container can drop their stuff off right there by the land. I mean, our big bus make it there. So, you know, a shipping container can definitely fit there. Uh, so mm -hmm. it's amazing. I'm excited that you know we have, you know, we have came, we have, we have arrived uh, to the moment. We can actually see the light at the end of the tunnel. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Anybody got any comments, any questions you want to share? My guest today, Brother Bumani, please do share those in the chat. We do have one telephone line open, 323-328-1863. Love to hear your thoughts. Have you given any thought? Are you up to pat repatriation or if nothing else? Just a visit. I can almost guarantee him, Brother Bumani, once you go to Africa for your first visit, then fantasies and dreams about traveling to Paris and Rome and London kind of fade in yeah. comparison 
to traveling to Addis Ababa, Accra, Nairobi, and others. I visited, um, those are the main cities, Kampala, that I've spent significant time in. And um, it's just beautiful. It's beautiful walking into a country and when you see the police, when you see the mil members of the military, you smile at them because you, they look just like you. The presumption is, and it's not always true, but the presumption is, that's my family. They're here to protect me in my best self-interest. And also oh, yeah. realizing Ghana is one of the most stable democracies in, on the African continent. That's one of the great reputations about Ghana. Their record of peaceful transition of government is absolutely superb. And that is now spreading this good governance, is spreading across the continent, no matter what the Biden administration corporate controlled media has to say about our continent. They told a huge lie in saying that the TPLF, Tigray People's Liberation Force, was about to take Addis Ababa, the capital of Ethiopia. Mm, problem with that lie was they only told that to us in the West. They didn't tell that to people of Ethiopia who were just going about their daily lives because there was zero <laughs> threat to Addis Ababa. Zero threat. Yeah, so one of those things where we have to get information from the source because, you know, when we start just picking up uh, foolishness from other sources, you're, you're going to believe anything. But uh, you're right, because once I was in um, Africa, it was a whole different story because I was just in Ghana and Tanzania in November and December. Mm -hmm. So, you know, so you saw the highlights and you heard about those things there. That's right. That's right. Different story. And, and, and one of the experiences we have, this is a little off topic, but I want people to know there is a distinction. We got a chance to spend, I think it was eight days in Ethiopia in 2017 yes. at the invitation of Ethiopia Airlines and the Ministry of Tourism and Trade. Brother Yao and the Pan-African Technical Association put this trip together and we got the invitation because we're known advocates, loud voices for Africa. And Ethiopia is, from my perspective, the most Christian nation on the planet. While in America, African-Americans are considered the most Christian of all ethnicities within America. But the Ethiopian Christians and their prosperity and their peaceful living and all of that beautiful life that they were living was completely different than the Christianity that has captured so many of our members here on this um, in these lands. Can you relate to that distinction I'm making there that if you're a Christian in America, you need to go to Ethiopia to see what a truly Christian country looks and feels like? Uh, yes, and you saw my one time uh, reconnecting to that connection. Uh, that would be ideal for Christians to connect to Ethiopia. It's a good program, uh, especially the program that was put together. And uh, going to different uh, Coptic churches and going into, you know, and seeing literally foundation. It's incredible. Mm -hmm. uh, so we traveled to one of the great wonders of the world, and that is the Sir, the church of St. George carved into stone there in Ethiopia. Oh, I'll never forget that. And Lalabella. Lalibella, that's right. Lalibella, yeah. And yes, uh, I, mean, I think we saw a total of six churches that were carved into the stone there in Lalibella, didn't we? Uh, yes, it was so much. I don't remember. All I remember is uh, that I did record everything. So that's one of the things that, that was incredible. I recorded those things. So um, again, family got those things uploaded to where they can see it. Um, and I, I even go back a lot of times and go back and watch those things because a lot of times when you're there, you're visualizing and enjoying it. But um, there, sometimes you have to go back and you know reprocess it. That's right. I should pull up all my Ethiopia documentary because I did a lot of shooting. You did a lot of shooting. You go and pull that stuff up and maybe invite people. Came, come spend an hour or two on Zoom and tour with us these African places where we travel. What a joy, what a delight it is to invite friends over to my house when I come back from one of these trips and say, let's take a tour, let's go on safari. That's it right there. Um, and that's why I publicly share all my documentation because it is, you know, one of those, put it out there. And also it's um, a way to put information out there about positive things about Africa. Cause I still feel like it's a lot of negative information out there. Uh, so. I uh, always try to put, uh, produce positive energy as just us going in that, different parts of Africa. You're enjoying yourself. Like in Tanzania, we have this beautiful um, uh, sunset cruise. Uh, mm -hmm. And 
you have a top part of the boat, you go in there, you're just chilling, relaxing, but the boat goes around all different part of the uh, the island and mm -hmm. goes to other little islands in, in a, and it's during you know, the evening time, so it's beautiful. And you, you have uh, the drummers drumming and people are just, uh, just enjoying their drinks and socializing. Uh, so those are just like nice, energetic uh, things to do right there in Africa, family. Um, and, you know, you, you literally, um, you can make it, you know, what it is based on this, your openness. So trying to put information like that out there and say, hey, family, this is us. We're on the beaches at Zanzibar. We're just enjoying paradise, tropical beauty. Uh, so you know, it feels mm -hmm. good. I'm looking forward to this. More people that are sharing that energy and this you know, keep sharing that experience. Absolutely, be Sean. So many beautiful, detailed memories come up. I'll never forget the year that Just Love traveled with us. This beautiful yes. young brother, Just Love, was was an incredible character. He was a songwriter. He was a, a bohemian. <laughs> he, had, he was married to two beautiful young women. And I'll never forget our experiences. Remember the canopy walk there in, in Ghana? What's the forest called? Oh, yes, that's Kakum National Park. Yeah, yeah the Kakum. We did the canopy walk. And I remember the, the year that Just Love was with it. As we were coming off the canopy walk, we all kind of walked down this last walk. And it's, it's a good little parade, really high up in the air. But as we got to the end of it, everyone was coming off the canopy walk, doing all kind of stunts and rollovers and backwards and all this kind of stuff. Meanwhile, this thing is way up in the air. And a lot of people just freaked out because of that. But we, the courageous ones, and I think brother, brother Just Love topped us all coming off that canopy walk. That's a memory I'll never forget. Praise be his eternal name. And so that's what we do when we travel to Africa. We're going to have to wrap up the program for right it's now, Brother Romani. I always enjoy our conversations. At the end of these reminiscences, as well as we further plan on doing this, again and again into the future i'm always filled with this great sense of well-being and you know this is us not just witnessing history but making history for the bomani for those who are just tuning in let them know how they can remain in contact with you to be able to get more details on how they might be accomplishing uh, accompanying one of these upcoming trips as well as your final words of encouragement to our LIB radio family, come home. Your mother continent is awaiting your return. Uh, yes, family, you can connect with me uh, from our website, Africa for the Africans dot org. Uh, YouTube page is youtube.com forward slash Bomani 2007. And uh, you can catch all of the photos on facebook.com forward slash Bomani. So those are where you get the three access of photos, videos, and also documentation to be prepared for the journey of a lifetime or to connect with me on any aspects of business or networking. And the final That's word, right. family, uh, the best thing I will always say to you is, family, do your research, do critical thinking, and also communicate with the source of anything you're looking to do and how it works in Africa. And people like myself, as consultants and business people, that have experience and are experts in land traveling, doing business, real estate. You can just reach out to me anytime. I'm a person that I tell people I'm not that busy like that, but I'm a serious person. So reach out and connect. Uh, when you're on the website, there's a link that say a uh, WhatsApp. You can connect that way, or you can just uh, just see my number from one of the flyers or postcards or anything in this call. And family, I'll be on standby for your communication and connection. And I look forward to connecting with everyone as we build this connection from Africa to the diaspora and from the diaspora to Africa. That's right. A connection that is building for a future that will last for 500 to 5,000 years, depending on, on how we create that future today. Thank you so much, Brother Bomani. Love to all of the family there. And uh, I look forward to seeing you this coming uh, fall in tanzania probably going to meet you in dar es salaam oh uh, yes uh, absolutely so you know you can always there you go you have access to all those details too so you and i would definitely connect back dynamite dynamite well lib radio listening audience that is what we do here when we get together with you we've been talking about africa for the africans in your journey 
seeing yourself in these photographs, these beautiful photographs of all of our people dressed in their beautiful ketenge, purchased right there on the spot. Tell your friends to tell their friends, to tell even more people, we can do this. As Brother Robert says, Safari Niya Milele Ubuntu. And he's speaking in Swahili. You need to get the translation for that yourself. And on that note, we're going to wrap it up for today. You've been tuned into your favorite. We aim to be your favorite. We are LIV Radio, LIV TV, and livinginblack.com. Tell your friends to tell the friends we have our own now. And you know something? Ours is and should be considered to be just as favorable, just as valuable as anything anybody else has got. And tell them you heard about it on your favorite LAB radio, LAB TV, and Living in Black Tom. Make sure you like today's program. And if you have not already, share and subscribe to the channel. So we can continue to do this and to build and to build and to build and to build. I say, I say, I say, yo.